Throughout history, theater has been a major source of entertainment. From Aristotle's analysis on drama, to Shakespeare's to be or not to be, theater has woven its way through our history. President Lincoln was even shot while enjoying this beloved pastime. Every defining moment in America is reflected in its theater. By 1867, American theater didn't have its own identity yet, and as immigrants were filtering into the country, so did their theater. Like Norwegian playwright Henrik Ibsen, known as the father of modern drama, not only did his plays portray a world that looked like reality, they touched on taboo subjects. His play A Doll's House was very controversial, as the mother in the play left home to discover herself, which was unthinkable for a woman at that time. As the 1900s rolled around, theater was slowly becoming seen as an industry in its own right. Titles like producer and director were being thrown around. Businessmen were buying into the business, like Andrew Carnegie and his famous Carnegie Hall. Unions began to form, like the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees and the Actors' Equity Association. When the World Wars hit, members of the theater community were ready to support the troops, like the Stage Women's War Relief, who would send entertainers to perform for the troops. This group would later become the American Theater Wing, the committee in charge of the Tony Awards. After the Great Crash occurred in 1929, one wealthy man who was fond of theater took advantage of the drop in sales and bought a strip of land in New York. That man was John D. Rockefeller, and the land became Radio City Music Hall, home of the Rockettes. When the Great Depression set in, President Roosevelt included theater in his New Deal programs. The Federal Theater Project gave funding to theaters, but was very strict about what could be staged. Like the controversial play The Cradle Will Rock, because the lead character was a prostitute, the overseers of the Federal Theater Project deemed it inappropriate and barred any actor who was a member of a union from performing the play. However, when the playwright began performing it himself on opening night, actors joined in from the audience. During the Cold War, many members of the theater community were under scrutiny of being labeled a communist. Throughout the 40s and 50s, members of the entertainment industry found their way onto the Hollywood blacklist, like playwrights Lillian Hellman, who was left financially ruined, all because the content of their work seemed sympathetic to communism. As the civil rights movement was gathering momentum in the 60s, so was the black community in theater. In 1959, Lorraine Hansberry's play, A Raisin in the Sun, debuted. The man say to his woman, I got me a dream. She says, eat your eggs, they're getting cold. man say to his woman, help me now to take a hole in this world somehow. And she says, eat your eggs and go to work. I tell you, I got to change my life because I'm choking to death. And all you say to me is eat these eggs. Although the first African-American to win the prestigious Pulitzer in drama didn't occur until 1982, Hansbury was the first African-American woman to have a play on Broadway. As the war settled down and there were fewer statements to be made, theater went back to being the entertainment it has always been. In the 80s, it caught the beginning of the gay rights movement with plays like Angels in America. It just... We can't just stop. We're not rocks. Progress, migration, motion is modernity. It's animate. It's what living things do. We desire. Even if all we desire is stillness, it's still desire for. Even if we go faster than we should, we can't wait. And wait for what? God. God. He isn't coming back. But it seemed to fade as a tool for a powerful statement. That is until 9-11 when the towers came down in New York. The theater became a beacon of hope for the country. The lights of Broadway marquees were seen as a symbol to the rest of the world that New York was still open for business. Now that the gay rights movement is in full swing, the movement can already be seen making its mark on theater. After all, the latest Tony winner for Best Musical, Kinky Boots, is about a man who dresses like a woman. 
And now, as America continues to grow, its theater will follow like a shadow. Give my regards to Brooke.